Hey there everybody, so I did a video a couple of years back when diesel was cheaper than petrol and as we see now, just as of today, it's nearly 190 for unleaded but it's actually 196 per litre for diesel um, so what I'm thinking is, just curious as to see how that's affecting how things are uh, for people making a decision between diesel uh, or petrol hybrid um, so there was a time diesel was just simply cheaper than petrol and to be fair if someone had asked me about a year ago or even before this whole fuel pricing thing changed uh, I would have said okay do you know what a diesel car is more efficient and the price of diesel is less so in my opinion it still makes sense to buy the diesel over the hybrid uh, one point of note on this video is that the Diesel is no longer available brand new in the Kona, but this will be soon. This is more just to give you an idea about how diesel and petrol is kind of changing from the point of view of which is the better car to buy. So traditionally, the diesel would have been the most efficient and diesel was cheaper, as we were saying. Um, this car is a mild hybrid, which means basically there is a small 48 volt battery sitting in the boot. It's still a regular diesel car, though. So from the point of view, I mean, that 48 volt battery, right? What does it do? See the way the car starts? There's no startup motor, it's actually starting up using the likes of that battery. That battery will also um, <coughs> power things like auxiliaries, like lights and heating and stuff. Well, it's partly power them. And the other thing as well is these do a bit of a gliding mode. So when you're cruising and you're no longer using the accelerator um, and the throttle is pretty much un uh, completely disengaged, it'll go into a gliding mode where basically it'll turn off the engine for about, you know, maybe five or six seconds, but eventually it comes back on. Anyway, what I'm trying to say to you is it's a mild hybrid, so people get these confused sometimes. Mild hybrid, marginal help, but it's still a good platform to show you how a diesel engine compares to the other one I'm going to show you in a while, which is a petrol hybrid. Before I go, I'm going to zero this. So we're going to go for drive information. Let's go for since refueling. No, let's go for accumulated info. Okay, I've reset the trip and we're sitting at 9238 uh, and no averages or anything like that there so um, I'll just show you the kind of driving I do which is some motorway and then there's also some other kind of back roads and stuff you'll see what I mean anyway. so the likes of these cars as a mild hybrid to be fair I'd say most people that own these mild hybrids don't even realize they're mild hybrids uh, this car just drives like a regular diesel car it's manual gearbox 115 horsepower and quite an economical engine overall nice gearbox actually in these and a good responsive diesel engine the other one that we're going to drive after this is what they call full hybrid full hybrid doesn't have a plug but the difference is the likes of this diesel can't do any electric driving or anything like that but the full hybrid petrol can do partly some amount of electric driving but i'll show you that when we're driving the car these diesel engines are good uh, one of the biggest problems for europe is that just the emissions criteria that manufacturers have to meet are becoming almost impossible to meet with the diesel engine so it's not that diesel engines are disappearing because hybrids better for customers it's just they're struggling to make the diesel engines and comply to european regulations because of that then there's going to be people that will no longer be able to buy a diesel that they traditionally did so i hope this video might give them an idea of what to expect if they go for a petrol hybrid as an alternative uh, so after using it okay i have learned two things here uh the first one is that i don't appear to live as far from work as i thought actually do you know what last time i did a video like this i was going a different route i forgot and They've opened this section there at Kerry Group near Nace, which cuts a nice bit off my journey. So uh, 146 kilometers is now what I've covered up and down, and the car has averaged 4.4 liters per 100 kilometers. On to the next one. Nice Civic Type R there. Um, so this one here is a Kona Hybrid. Uh, it's a bit windy. Kona Hybrid, actually very similar looking car. But for this video, we're not looking at that kind of stuff. So even when you sit into the car, it's very, very similar. Except for it's automatic. Okay, so what am I going to do here? I'm going to go in and I'm going to zero this one here. So since refueling, fine, start up the car. Uh, this is a full hybrid car, which means it has a battery. So if I go in over here, um, it'll show me information about how the car is running and all that kind of stuff. In this case, these batteries, they never really go much more than, uh, sorry, just there's a flickering there when it switches cameras. They normally go between a quarter and three quarters full so what i mean uh and by the way you don't have to care about this you don't need to do anything the car does everything itself so you don't ever have to regulate this you do your own thing but uh this car will charge the battery up to about maybe three quarters and then it'll do some electric driving 
But what I mean by that is, you know, half kilometer here, quarter of a kilometer there, assist the petrol engine a lot of the time. Um, and then if it gets down to a quarter, fair enough, it'll start recharging. So it has that self-charging, even though I hate that phrase, it does keep self-charging. Um, and in other words, so you're not plugging it in or anything like that. So I've no idea fuel efficiency. I still think the diesel is going to be a little bit better, but um, I'll show you as we go along. Uh, same as the other car then, uh, we're going to zero it up. So I'll go to accumulated information, hold it. So that means now um, it's going to give us an accurate reading for how far we traveled and also what kind of fuel efficiency we're doing. So here's a typical example of where these work really well. Uh, doing about 80 odd kilometers per hour and the car is doing a full electric driving for the last half a kilometer and I reckon it'll probably do something similar for the next quarter of a kilometer. So that's quite useful and that's where they become very, very efficient. After time, this car will eventually deplete the battery so we can see EV over here and we can see here it's only the battery that's uh, powering the car. But eventually then that battery will be at a level where it'll need the car to help it charge back up and that's where what they call the self-charging thing. The engine will cut in, it'll start driving the car and it'll also start recharging the battery as well. So you can see here EV is no longer available as the car is now self-charging. Once you get onto motorways up at 120 kilometers an hour the car won't really do any electric driving. The battery will help the petrol engine so it'll be more efficient than a normal petrol but it's really these kind of roads 80, 100 kilometers an hour or even creeping around towns and stuff that's where the hybrid car gets to use a lot more battery driving and that's where it becomes a lot more efficient. So as we get to the end of the video then, what I'll do is just think about fuel prices, think about the efficiency on the two cars. One factor you just do need to consider as well though, um, hybrid cars are more expensive than diesel to buy in general at the time of the video. So there is a comfort al um, aspect here as well. So a lot of people sometimes they might buy a hybrid car and they like the idea that they're going into an automatic car. And an automatic gearbox, you have to respect the fact that it's more technologically advanced than a manual and it is going to be more expensive. Anyway, let's see how the fuel efficiency looks at the end of the journey on this hybrid Kona. Finished the journey, so full hybrid Kona. Averaged 4.6 litres per 100 kilometres for 146 kilometres covered. Quick anecdotal observation here. I'm surprised that there's actually that small a difference. Think about this way. The other car did 4.4 litres. This one's done 4.6 litres. Both cars, the exact same journey, mix of motorway and then predominantly roads, which were maybe 80 to 100 kilometres an hour. One caveat I'm going to say here, if this was, uh, say, two hours of motorway driving, this would be a completely different result. But for a mixed drive, and, and in other words, the diesel is more efficient at 120 kilometres an hour. Always has been, always will be, fact of life. But for most mixed kind of driving that a lot of people do, these are super comparable. In terms of a percentage difference, that is literally only a 5% difference. In other words, the hybrid car is 5% harder on fuel, but like for someone's fuel bill, I mean, if your fuel bill was a thousand euros in a year, the hybrid car here would be about 50 euros more expensive to run than the comparable diesel. Okay, so um, one thing that's going to totally throw a spanner in the works here is the price of fuel. So I did the video starting on a Tuesday, Diesel was more expensive than petrol. Unleaded is now two euros a liter and diesel is 195. I don't know. So we just live in a time that is so all over the place. Uh, this is what, the middle of 2022. It's just, <laughs> so basically diesel was five cent per liter more expensive earlier in the week than unleaded. And now unleaded is five cent per liter more than diesel within three days. So, ugh. Okay, so anyway, think about it this way. There's a couple of scenarios that we could look at here. So the first one is, let's just pretend that the price of fuel is the exact same between the two vehicles. The way I would look at that is, if you are going to buy a brand new car, even though I know you can't in a Kona, but there's still choices out there, other models, even Tucson and that kind of stuff. If the price of fuel was the same, um, usually you will pay more for the hybrid car. But you have to remember that the hybrid car is an automatic, so I think that's got to add a little bit more value. So from a point of view of cost saving and stuff like that, because they're so similar to run, uh, you would say to yourself, I'm paying extra for an automatic car. So if I want an automatic car, that is why I would buy the hybrid, but for really no other reason. Second scenario. If you're buying a second hand car, then it's kind of the same. And the reason is the second hand car is, uh, so if you compare a hybrid and a diesel, the hybrid car, because it's automatic more so, it tends to be slightly more expensive than the diesel. Oh, this is the diesel automatic, that is. Um, so you're paying a bit of a premium for the gearbox more so than the fuel type. Um, so in that case, again, you have to say to yourself, right, is it worth buying that hybrid car because I really want an automatic car? 
more so than going with that type of fuel type. The other thing as well is some people worry about is a diesel car going to be worth nothing in a few years. I really, really, I do this a long time. I don't think it is. Always, every time something is on the way out, people turn up and look for the last of the. So if there's diesel cars going to disappear and diminish, people are going to come looking for the last of the diesel cars because they still do a big mileage or a lot of motorway driving and diesel cars still work really well for that. So I suppose some people are going to be looking for a right or wrong answer and I really don't think there is. When you look at the pricing structure, like we're saying, you're kind of paying a bit extra more so for the car being an automatic rather than being hybrids per se, which is the right car to buy. If you're doing some serious motorway mileage, I would say then yeah, definitely buy a diesel car. But if you're doing a mix like what I did there, either car can work. So it's really down to which car you prefer rather than being the right or wrong one. I mean, okay, mathematically, if the fuel prices were in favor of diesel, where diesel was slightly cheaper, and it's marginally more efficient, then you'd buy a diesel if you're really focused on that. But if the fuel type, or if the fuel prices were the other way, where the unleaded price was actually cheaper than diesel, then maybe the hybrid car could be slightly cheaper to run or very much there thereabouts. But it's not enough of a gap. So I really would actually advise someone, buy the car you want rather than trying to pick the right one. Because I don't think it's really possible to pick the right one with the variable fuel prices we have these days. Anyway, hopefully that video is useful. I uh, don't know if it is. And actually, by the way, if you've managed to watch the whole lot of it, I appreciate your time because I'm sure parts of it are really boring. But um, hopefully it gives someone a better idea who's wondering which is the right thing to do or somebody that's had diesels for years and they're getting shoved into hybrid now and they've no choice and might put their mind at rest about making the transition. Um, so if you've watched the whole thing, I really appreciate your time. See you later.